how has the garden been this summer uh overall pretty good some ups and downs some frustrating things and some unexpected things both good and bad so no not bad for our first big garden so. all right would you do it again sure with better results maybe hopefully some things were pretty good yeah some things were frustrating yeah you learn a lot so all right that's my beautiful bride kelly <laughs> oh yeah hey what's up everybody john here and we're back in the garden on a beautiful september morning it's uh nice and cool this morning it was in the low 60s when we got up and it's about mid to upper 60s right now and we're gonna be doing some things out here i think one of the big things is uh you've been you've noticed here in the last couple months that our cucumber plants just exploded and produced a ton. Kelly took out uh, the pickling cucumber plants here a couple weeks ago because they were done. And now we're going to take out the burpless cucumbers today because they are, they've had it. Um, I think the plants decided, yeah, we're going to be done for this year. So we're going to take those out. Um, we're going to show you some of the things that were recently planted for fall harvest and it seems like most of those are starting to grow pretty good such as uh, the beets the peas um, so yeah we'll take a look at those oh, what else yeah i don't know we'll maybe we'll just find some stuff and i'll show it to you who knows what today might hold so come along we'll take a look at the garden so I'll just jump right in. Um, you'll see this is this is our burpless cucumber. And you can tell that the leaves have all pretty much dried up. I don't know if that's a sign that the plant is done or if that has anything to do with the uh, powdery mildew um, or combination of multiple things. But all that's going to come out today and Kelly's going to go ahead and plant some more peas in that section of the bed so that um so that we have a full bed full of peas so yeah that has been a really 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 good plant super productive um along with the pickling cucumber plants that we had and so we are super pleased this summer with how that has done so and here we have my beautiful wife kelly and her natural habitat she is going to now attempt to remove the burpless cucumber plants from its resting place. Let's watch. All right, well, we're, we, might, we might take a look, but uh, anyway, we're not just gonna stare at her. That's creepy. So right here, if you remember some of our pickling, not pickling, some of our burpless cucumbers, they were 14 inches long and fat around like a baseball bat. But here in the last three weeks or so, they started looking like this and growing in all kinds of funky shapes. And now you see what the leaves look like in the plants. So it's just time give the soil something else to put its energy toward and that's going to be the peas
You ever see a cucumber look like that? That's awesome. Well, there you go. That's uh, no more cucumber plants. And right here, you'll notice this is our beets. And most of them have come up. Most of the seeds have sprouted and are making beets. So, like I've said before, I don't think I have ever eaten one. But because it looks like we're going to have so many, I'm going to have to try it. And of course, at the end of this bed, we've got some of our onions. Now with our onions, um, these seem like they took forever, like they were never going to grow. Just like the ones over here in our tall bed, um, our onion bed over here, someplace right about there. And then all of a sudden they grew. And then we started having issues on our tomato plants with the army worms. And then we started noticing we had army worms on the onions. I didn't realize army worms would attack onions, but evidently they do. So a few weeks ago, we tried to find some BT to treat those with, which basically it uh, holds a bacteria that the worm will chew on the leaf and the bacteria gets into the worm and the bacteria from the inside out will basically eat away at the worm and it will go ahead and die and so it won't be able to uh, make into a moth or whatever fine insect it turns into and so which is good because then it can't lay more eggs and make more worms so so anyway Kelly she found some BT uh, a couple days ago and she powdered the onions and the uh, what else the onions <laughs> the, the onions and the tomato plants that's what I was just talking about so yeah so she powdered those and uh, hopefully it's doing good hopefully it's working um, didn't see any worms this morning there's been an increase in worms and so here's the deal you can't just treat one time for the worms because every couple of weeks the, it's like a new cycle will happen and so they say that you should treat every week to two weeks and it had been a little bit since we uh, had put some neem oil out and uh, yeah so now we got the powder down for the worms and hopefully it's doing some good so all right let's move on here are our our new peas for the fall and they really look really good um, back in the spring when we planted our first set of peas uh, now it's a different variety than than in the spring but these are really they they look better already in a short amount of time than even the ones early on so I think it I think it really has something to do with the timing of the planting so we got these in toward the end of the summer when it's starting to cool down we got the others in at the end of the spring when it was really starting to warm up and we think it just got too hot for them so yeah hopefully these are going to do really well for the fall because they do like cooler weather so and in the last couple of weeks our potatoes got harvested and as soon as they were harvested, uh, new potatoes were planted, hoping for a quick turnaround on those that the ground, hopefully the dirt will not be too hot for them and that they will germinate quickly and that they will actually produce um, the tubers. That's a fun word, tubers. Anyway, so let's uh, take a look and see if we got any starting to come up. Well, yes, we do. We do have some potatoes that are starting to uh, make a plant above the ground. Right there is one, and and it's uh 
just now starting to come up. Um, I looked out through here. There's a couple more that are really hard to see even with the eye. So I'm not going to show you, but take my word for it. They're coming up. I think by next week, next uh, the week after for sure, there's going to be quite a few that are showing and really starting to grow. So yeah, that's exciting. We like to see the things producing and, and growing. So potatoes, hopefully we'll have another harvest. So here is our, our lettuce and our spinach. And you, I don't know, can you see, can you see the powder on that? Maybe down here, see the powder that's on there. The lettuce also had army worms that were that were in it and chewing on some of the leaves too. So Kelly put some of the BT over there. So, you know, hopefully, hopefully the BT will be effective for the worms. Um, but I'm still not, I'm not, still not sure about why the lettuce is growing the way that it is. It just seems like it really shot up like a quick weed sometimes does and kind of outgrows the, uh, uh, it grows faster than the stem of the plant actually allows it to stand. So I don't know if it just got too excited because the cool, cooler weather was super exciting for it. But uh, I don't know, hopefully it will solid up and, and just grow, uh, grow taller instead of falling over the way that it is. Time will tell. We don't know. We still got a couple of yellow squash and we'll see if they produce enough to actually pick. We got another yellow and green squash if you remember from before. We were not able to harvest because it kind of died off and fell. But, but we got one growing now and We'll see. We'll see if it does any good. Cantaloupe vine still doing good. Still a couple of really nice cantaloupe. Still hoping the fruit wins the race. I don't know. I guess we'll find out. And last week Kelly cut back a whole bunch of the uh, marigolds. Marigolds? Marigolds. Kelly cut back a whole bunch of the marigolds and from where I'm standing it's hard to tell because they just took off it was almost like cutting the marigolds gave them a shot at life and they decided to go ahead and get big again Anyway, hello, dragonfly, and our big onions over here. You can see where Kelly dusted those as well but I got some really good size on some of these and they're starting to poke out of the soil there so look how beautiful and healthy those are looking so keep those worms out and from a distance over here, look how beautiful that zucchini plant is. Huge and full. There are blossoms down inside. And way down, I don't know if you can see, right in there, there is a zucchini. Oh, I see. There's some shiny. Right there's some shiny. And that is the zucchini down inside. 
nice big beautiful plants beans still looking good the spaghetti squash was about to die back but there are so many new green leaves all all throughout and blossoms but I don't think it's going to uh, I don't think it's going to produce um, and if it does it's not going to have time to mature and uh, so we'll we'll eat the ones hopefully soon or at least pick the ones that have grown they look they look pretty good it's just exciting like I said many times before it's our first full-on garden it's our first experience with a lot of it trial and error even uh, I know a lot of experienced gardeners that have a lot of the same issues this year as what we have had if you gardened this year um, let me know how things went for you if you have anything that you were disappointed about if you have anything that you were super excited about because it did a lot better than you thought it would drop me a comment down below and uh, and just let me know uh, I think I'm about ready to uh, get off here I'm gonna go and grab some neem oil and mix that up and I have some things I need to spray for the powdery mildew um, it's been a uh, it's been almost two weeks since I actually sprayed so all right guys so I'm actually gonna walk you through the steps of uh, using neem oil I'm going to mix it up and spray it on some of our powdery mildew so here we go okay so if you're gonna use neem oil um, there's some things that you're gonna need to be able to uh, mix it up and and apply it so first you're gonna need neem oil and this is triple action neem oil by southern ag a broad spectrum fungicide insecticide miticide 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 it helps with powdery mildew spider mites aphids and stuff like that so anyway today we're going to use it for powdery mildew neem oil and you need a measuring spoon this is a one tablespoon uh, measuring spoon so for our application we're going to use a one gallon sprayer right there that's our one gallon sprayer and for one for one gallon it takes two tablespoons of neem oil and uh, so you need the neem oil the spoon the sprayer and a water source so it's pretty simple you can get the uh, you get the sprayer for very like 15 bucks 20 bucks depending on what you want to get um, measuring spoon that was something that uh, was already around the house the neem oil was the most expensive because it's a concentrate so it's going to uh, it's going to last multiple applications um, unless you're spraying a ton then you'll use more of it but for our purposes it's not gonna it's not gonna be a whole bunch so let's get this stuff mixed up all right so I'm going to first measure out the neem oil into our sprayer. <laughs> After I take out the foil. <sighs> so here's the deal guys. If you're going to do a video on how to do something, you might want to take the foil off of the neem oil before you actually open it. Because when I poked my finger through it, the neem oil, I don't know if you saw it, went all over my hand. So, anyway, back to it. So I'm going to measure out two tablespoons. One. Two.
and then we just fill it up. Now on the other side of this, there's a marking of where the gallon is. And that's filled up. But I gotta get the neem oil off my hand. You put the plunger back in. Tighten that down. Give it a few pumps until it, it's tight. Lock it in place. And then it's ready to spray. So that's how easy it is to mix up the neem oil. And on the sprayer, it has different settings for the head, for a fan shape or for a cone shape, however you want to use it to, uh, to spray and cover the leaves. And uh, sometimes I change it up depending on what I'm doing. But anyway, so I'm going to spray a little bit, show you what that looks like, and uh, then we'll wrap it up. And just so you're aware of what we are spraying, see all the white that is on the leaves that's the powdery mildew and that's what we are spraying for so let's get to it Now, when I'm spraying, I can't just do a little bit. The thing about the mildew is it acts a lot like, it's a lot like mold and water repels pretty well off of the outside of mold. So you really gotta soak it um, so that it absorbs into the powdery mildew. Otherwise, it just kind of sits and rolls off and uh, we wanna make sure we're doing as much as we can to actually get rid of this stuff. And you really gotta pay attention because there's gonna be a lot of, it's gonna be a lot of leaves underneath and behind other leaves. You wanna be able to, or make sure to get down underneath and behind Every time I spray, when I'm done, I always find leaves that didn't get sprayed. And uh, as you're spraying and after you spray, it's always good to walk around what you are spraying because you almost always are gonna miss some um, that's hidden by other leaves or that is uh, at a different angle from what you're looking at. All right, well, so that is, uh, that's the process of spraying the neem oil. And whenever your sprayer starts to lose pressure, you just uh, open up that little valve, pump it up again, and you're good to go for a little while longer. So I finished up this uh, zucchini plant, couple of zucchini plants here. I'm gonna move on. I got uh, some others uh, that I gotta spray here real quick. Um, but yeah, so that is going to be it for now in the garden uh, like I said thank you guys for watching if you like the video hit the like button if you're not yet a subscriber hit the subscribe button and 
if you want to know when new videos come out ring the notification bell you guys thanks again i will see you on the next video